and having, you know, the sort of the problem is so big and I'm so very small kind of um, thinking. And then I realized that, that as a doctor, um, I hold, and I think for the physicians who are in the room, we hold um, one of the real missing pieces, and that is that we are skilled science translators. It's what we do all day long. We read about the research and the advances in medical science, and then we put it into plain language for our patients. And, um, and so when I realized that there was a particular job for me to do, that's when I decided that we should get on our bicycle and ride across the country and, uh, and be talking about this. And we've been traveling since mid-July. We have, I talked to all kinds of people. I have done presentations in living rooms. I've talked to a Rotary Club. I've talked at hospitals. I've spoken with medical students. Um, I've been at churches. And, um, and, I, and I think that, that um, we're on to something. I think this is really um, a, a good approach as a way to look at climate change. So and um, clearly, the climate is changing. Um, this is a slide that a lot of people can relate to because if you're a gardener, this is what's on the back of the seed packet. And, um, and, it, and it shows where you can plant, um, where, where you can plant different kinds of plants and um, when it's safe to plant them in the spring so that they won't freeze. And the map had to be redone um, because, because the, the United States is getting warmer, and in general, almost ev everywhere is at least a half a zone warmer. We also have been having hotter summers. Um, the United States has been keeping temperature records for 117 years. So wherever you see a red state and it says 117, that means that this was the hottest summer on record. We're also seeing heavier um, rainfall, and um, that's because with the warmer temperatures, there's uh, more evaporation of surface water, and, um, and it's not going to come down as snow, so we're getting more of it as rain and in heavy rainfall events. And you can see that the changes are really dramatic. About 60% of our country is in moderate to severe um, drought right now. So heat waves kill more people than any other kind of extreme weather event. In the United States, about 1,300 people a year um, die from extreme heat events. Uh, the children, elderly people, and people who take certain kinds of medications like diuretics and, um, and um, psychiatric medicines like antipsychotics, uh, and people who work outdoors are the most vulnerable. Um, in 2006, we had a heat wave in California that lasted for two weeks. 600 people died. There were 16 hundred hospitalizations and 16,000 additional visits to the emergency room. Uh, the other way that increased uh, warmer temperatures can affect our health is through the food that we eat. And uh, when food is cooked and kept at room temperature, it's generally considered safe to be at room temperature for two hours. But when the temperature is over 90 degrees, bacteria multiply more rapidly and so there are increased cases of food poisoning associated with warmer weather. And a third of the cases of salmonella in the United States are associated with um, increased temperature. We, we also um, see, and I put this up as a seafood dinner because, um, because we also see effects of, of, um, of warming in, our, in um, seafood because when the ocean waters are warmer, we have more blooms of, um, of algae like the red tide, and they create toxins which concentrate up the food chain and can cause neurologic problems when you eat them. And there's no treatment for that. You just have to wait for it to wear off, which it usually does, but it's pretty unpleasant. Um, and the toxins are heat stable, which means that unlike um, other kinds of food poisoning where if you cook it really well, then you won't get sick, it doesn't matter how much you cook the seafood, you, you, the toxins are still active. And um, you probably have read it in the news, but with warmer weather, it's also affecting um, our, our harvest from the ocean. And, um, and the uh, population of cod and the cod catch is um, predicted to go down. And you've experienced already um, a, a problem with lobster and the soft shell rather than the hard due to uh, increased uh, water temperature. Um, and this is actually the worst year for West Nile virus um, in the history of the United States. West Nile virus is transmitted by mosquitoes, um, and, mis and climate change has been implicated in the speed of the spread of West Nile virus. 
uh, researchers looked at more than 16,000 cases of West Nile virus and matched them against local weather during the time that they occurred and found that there's a definite relationship between warmer temperatures and rainfall. Um, dengue fever is another uh, mosquito transmitted illness. It's a severe flu-like illness with a high fever, headache, and a rash, um, also caused by a virus. There's also um, no treatment for it. The first time you get it, it's just a misery. Um, the, if you catch it a second time, and um, especially children, it becomes something called hemorrhagic fever in which your immune system is um, stirred up to fight against your own body. And, um, and without intensive treatment, it can be 50% fatal. This is a bug called a, called a, a kissing bug, and it transmits a, a parasite infection called Chagas disease. And Chagas disease, um, when you get sick, doesn't really cause a lot of symptoms, but it's been called the AIDS of the Americas. Um, it's, it's, it's very common in Latin America. And, um, and, and they call it that because like AIDS, you don't often know when you get the infection, but over time you get ill. And this parasite attacks the heart. And about 30% of the people who get this infection end up developing heart failure. Uh, ozone, when it's up in the atmosphere protecting us from ultraviolet, is a good thing, but ozone at ground level um, irritates the respiratory system. And when ozone levels are high, um, we see lots of more visits to the emergency room and hospitalizations among people who have lung conditions like asthma and emphysema. Because ozone is really smog, and so it's the combination of the different chemicals that are in um, exhaust and coming out of smokestacks in the presence of heat and sunlight. And so the more heat and sunlight you have, the higher levels of ozone that you get. Um, because we have more heat and more sunlight, it causes the reaction to go faster. So we're not getting the benefit of the lowered levels of ozone that we should be from all of the work that we've done to clean up our air. All right, so drought is the other thing that we're seeing. Um, and when drought occurs, Crops fail. Um, this is from last year's drought, and those are farmers in Texas who gathered in a community park to pray for rain. Um, and then you can see what happened to their cattle um, who didn't have feed and had to be culled. And when we have crop failure, um, we, we see increased food prices, and that affects a lot of the more vulnerable people in our society who have difficulty putting food on the table. We have 48 million people in the United States who are considered food insecure, which means that they have uh, difficulty uh, always buying enough food to put on the table. And we have a million children who are very food insecure, which means that they go to bed hungry. And they are very vulnerable to any increase in the price of food. Um, and we know that food insecurity has health consequences, especially for children. Um, children who come from food insecure families are are um, much more likely to have iron deficiency anemia, 11 times more likely when they're in preschool, eight times more likely when they're in primary school, and even three times more likely as teenagers. And iron deficiency anemia is important because, because that means that there is a lack of the, the red stuff in your blood that's carrying oxygen to the brain. And children who have anemia have poor school performance and lasting developmental problems. And, um, and unfortunately, even when we diagnose the anemia and treat them with iron, those, those intellectual problems do not reverse. They're permanent. The other thing that happens with drought is, um, is dust storms. And this is a dust storm, a mile high dust storm engulfing the city of Phoenix. Someone created a weather model to look at uh, a drought. And, um, and they were able to predict pretty closely um, the a number of cases of, of this lung fungus that would occur. Um, based on the, on the uh, weather model. So it's definitely um, related to weather. Um, we also, this is more of a problem in the west than it is out here, but in, um, out where we live, wildfires, um, massive wildfires are becoming a feature of, of every summer. Um, this is a, from Colorado Springs from this summer. Um, they had to evacuate 32,000 people. Climate change is predicted to increase the frequency and size of wildfires in the western United States. We've actually seen that already. Um, but, but the prediction is that, it will, that for each degree rise in temperature, there will be a quadrupling of the area that burns. That the, um, the community that was exposed to smoke 
had a lot more um, hospital admissions for, um, for breathing and heart problems than the community that was not exposed to the wildfire smoke. And about 700 cities in the United States have what's called combined sewer overflow, um, I think including Portland, <laughs> and, um, which is about 400 million Americans who live in towns and cities that have combined sewer overflow. And what that means is, is that the same sewage pipes that are carrying away raw sewage are also supposed to carry away our storm runoff. And so when we have heavy rains, those systems become overwhelmed. And, and hospital admission rates after heavy rain um, for children with diarrhea triples. So we don't have a protected water supply. We are very vulnerable um, in this regard. Um, in addition to heavy rainfall, we're also um, going to see more coastal flooding. The sea level on the East Coast has been rising um, almost an inch a year since 1950 and is predicted to rise more than a foot by 2050 and three feet by 2100. And this is both from melting ice and because the water is warmer and warm water takes up more room than cold water. When you have flooding, there's a lot of runoff and when there's agricultural runoff, it's carrying with it um, fertilizer. And so it's adding nutrients to the water and that in co combination with the warmer um, temperatures um, creates these blooms of um, of blue-green algae. And, and blue-green algae, in addition to being um, spectacularly unattractive, um, also creates uh, a, a number of different toxins. And this is uh, Lake Erie, which is a water, drinking water source for 11 million people. So what we've been talking about really are the symptoms of a sick planet. Um, but what's the diagnosis? The diagnosis is pollution with carbon dioxide. We're, the planet is sick, and that's why we're getting sick. And um, I don't know if you noticed, but for almost everything that I talked about, I kept saying it's the children and the elderly and the people who have asthma who are the most affected. And that's because those are the people who are the most sensitive. And they are like the canaries in the coal mine. Um, you know how the miners used to take take canaries down into the mine because there was poison gas that was colorless, tasteless, and the only way they could tell if it was getting dangerous is if the canary died, and then they could come back up. But we can't come out of where we are. This is our planet, and um, if we're poisoning it, we still have to live here. There are crosses by the roadside every mile that we ride through for people who were cut down in their prime. And it really makes me think about the things that we don't do because we say that we don't have the time. Would those folks have done things different if that final day they knew was their last day to say sorry, thanks, and I love you. We don't control the future, our time or place of death, but we choose the way we live until we take our final breath. We go flying down the highway just as fast as we can go. No longer know our neighbors, much less stop and say hello. As if success and happiness were correlates of speed. No time to stop and wonder whether this is what we need.